to Lucas. Scorpion or Sub Zero? Well, Sub Zero, of course. Fucking two right, mate. <laughs> so, Lucas, would you like to explain to the lovely people at home what we're talking about today? We are talking about, you know, the Ice Ninja Sub Zero. Yes, and we will be referring mainly to the Sub Zero wiki on the Mortal Kombat wiki. Oh, okay. Which cool. exists and is awesome. And even more specifically, we'll be referring to Kwai Liang who is the second Sub-Zero canonically in the games, and I believe the third one in terms of his lineage. It's already bullshit. Yeah, because people might not know, yeah, there's multiple Sub-Zeros, including one in the past, who is the original Sub-Zero's granddad. What? And the Sub-Zero in the games now is the brother of the original Sub-Zero, who died and became Noob Sabot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, sure. like Mortal Kombat lore, like, I think the quote is, come for the gore, stay for the lore. <laughs> so you know what, Lucas? Let's jump into the lore right now, shall we? So we've got... Sub-Zero, general information. Real name, Kwai Liang. Gender, male. Origin, Earth Realm, specifically China. Resides in Earth Realm, and his species is a human slash cryomancer. Which to me is the coolest shit ever, because it means he has control over ice. I mean, it's literally the coolest shit ever. It's also the most broken OP power ever, because I think we've talked about it before, where was that mm. comic for the X-Men, where Emma Frost takes over Iceman, says you're a fucking moron. You don't create ice, you remove energy from the atmosphere. That's the most OP shit ever. Yep. And I think when he gets his body back, because, you know, comic shenanigans, like she takes over and he gets it back, and he instantly becomes an Omega level threat. He's like, oh yeah, you could just bring in a new ice age by removing all the energy from the Earth's atmosphere. He's just realised what power he actually had all along. Which really puts into context that moment where the guy who can just, like, control fire tries fighting him and then he just headbutts him. <laughs> <laughs> Which I quite like about like Sub Zero. As the games have gone on, like um, they've added to his model, like he's got frozen hands. Oh yeah. Which is like an explanation for his oh his power is too great that he can no longer control it. So he's just literally constantly just got frozen hands. Oh god. So fighting styles: Shotokan and Dragon. I want to fight like I, a dragon. I thought it was always just ninja because obviously he's a ninja. But actually, no, they're not. Have you ever heard that? In one of the introductions in like Mortal Kombat 11, it's like, oh, cool, you're a ninja. And Mortal Kombat was, the Lin Kuei are not ninjas. And he gets really mad about it. So, says, so why do you dress like them? It's yeah, like, we're not ninjas, but we dress like them. Why are there a dozen characters all dressed like ninjas that apparently aren't ninjas? No, like Sub-Zero is not a ninja. So and then we have like the games has appeared in, which I think is almost every single one. I would hope so. It's almost every single one, bar like one or two. Well, he's like... One of the two mascots for Which, the series. But he's not Ed Boon's favourite. That um, honour belongs to Scorpion. Oh, fuck Scorpion. Which is why Scorpion, like, I think it's Mortal Kombat 9, where on the character select screen you press start and just Sub-Zero gets wrecked. <laughs> Sub-Zero getting wrecked on the start screen. So should we start with just a basic summary of who Kwai Liang is? It already sounds like it's not going to be very basic, Carl. <laughs> so here's a quote from him, which is, like, you know, his 2011 battle quote, which is, this fight will be your last. Oh, that's cool. Like, he has some of the greatest quotes in the series. Yeah. Uh, my favourite one being where it's like, oh, I don't know who he's talking to. It's the person who, like, kills Scorpion in the story. But then okay. Scorpion comes back and it's like, you killed Scorpion. And they go, but he is your enemy. And Sub-Zero like crushes his like, ice in time and goes, he was my equal. He's like, oh, it's so <laughs> yes. fucking cool. It's like, the then he knows. Is, it's like Mortal Kombat is the perfect setup for quotes like that because you're literally fighting to the death. Yeah. But I just love the idea as well. Like, Sub-Zero is like, I hate him, but he's my equal. Yeah. And I think they even have an intro and they're fighting each other. It's like, one more round, Scorpion. It's like, yeah, go on then, why not? <laughs> he's like his Goku. Yeah, like, he pushes him further. They have that Goku and Vegeta moment of like, we know we're going to keep fighting, so fuck it one more. So, Kwai Liang, uh, which literally means quick cooling in Chinese. Of course it does. <laughs> uh, better known as Sub-Zero, uh, which, uh, which in his original language is Absolute Zero. Is a grandmaster of the Lin Kuei, formerly known as Tundra, and briefly as the cyborg LK520. Very briefly. When he was, uh, you know, Cyber Zero. Um, he's a Lin Kuei assassin in the Mortal Kombat fighting series. He is the younger brother of Bi Han, who was the original Sub Zero in the first Mortal Kombat game. I like the fact that his name is literally Cooling, but he wasn't the Sub Zero. <laughs> no, he was Tundra originally. Yeah. Tundra, which is so late, which I think was the original name they're going to give him until they realised Sub Zero sounds so much cooler. So, about Sub Zero. There are, in fact, two incarnations of Sub Zero, and they are siblings older brother Bi Han and younger brother Kwai Liang, who we're talking about today. Both are blue guard warriors who, at different times, use the code name Sub Zero and both serve the Lin Kuei. God damn, I love this series. It's so yeah. dumb. Both are descended from cryomancers, an outworld race possessing the ability to generate and control the powers of ice. However, they were both born in Earth Realm, and only the younger Sub Zero would discover his heritage. Kwai Liang bears a scar on his right high, which he received between the events of Mortal Kombat 3 in the new timeline. 
the scar was made by Kano, as revealed in one of the comic books. Okay. Yeah. The thing is, um, Kano would go for the eye. Because yeah, he he's, would, so, yeah. he's so salt about losing his own eye. Then he gets a cool robot eye that fires lasers. So if anything, he's actually better now he's, he's lost got his an eye. He's upgrade, yeah. He's so much cooler. So Behan appeared as Sub-Zero in the first Mortal Kombat game while Kwai Liang went by the code name Tundra after Behan was murdered by Scorpion. <laughs> During the first tournament, Kwai Liang swore vengeance on him. He mastered the art of ice and cold and took his brother's former code name. <laughs> I love that. It's like, he swore vengeance, but was also pissed off when Scorpion died. Yeah, and I think if you make new Cybot, who is like, you know, Sub-Zero's brother, fight Sub-Zero in Mortal Kombat 11, just like noob, he's just like, he delivers the most brutal verbal beatdowns and tells him like, you are not worthy of our grandfather's oh, code name. No. <laughs> and Sub-Zero's like, I'll beat the shit, I'll prove that I can. It's so rough, it's so oh, bad. Oh, just dunk it on his brother. Yeah, he know. even says stuff like, oh, I'm glad that you're dead and shit like that. So Holy shit. Like, that is a sibling rivalry for the ages. So uh, appearance, I think we all know this one, but like, you know, maybe there's something in here we're not familiar with. So Sub-Zero dresses in the familiar blue garb ninja-like uniform. Originally Sub-Zero was depicted with Asian fe facial features that are revealed in the ending when unmasked due to his Chinese-American heritage. And have you heard about that? Where it's uh, the voice actor for a lot of the actors in Mortal Kombat 11 was changed to represent where the character is supposedly from. So okay. they got like an Asian guy to play Scorpion. But for Sub-Zero, because Steve Bloom's so good, they just kept him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, did you see that they did, like, a, a special event skin um, for Sub-Zero, where it's, like, some rapper or something? Oh, no. And they got him to do some voiceovers for it, but he clearly recorded them, like, in a toilet or something. And the voiceovers are so bad, and someone just uploaded, just, here's what happened you make original Sub-Zero fight this shit guy. And the voice is just so bad. They're so inconsistent. It's like, obviously, the first person that will come to mind when I say this is Ronda Rousey. Yeah, oh man, it's so bad. And then you compare that to like, all the recordings for all the voice lines, and even the audio quality sounds better. It's really confusing. Yeah, well, I think I pointed out in another video where there is a moment in the story where Ronda Rousey literally sounds like Tommy Wiseau from The Room. Where he's like, we will not fight, <laughs> not for you. It's like, what? <laughs> I don't get it anyway. Interestingly, Sub-Zero is one of the few characters in the series to show signs of natural aging, faster than anyone due to the dragon medallion. So did you know about that? No. So the medallion that he wears, that gives him, like, you know, enhances his ice powers. It robs him of his, his youth. I'd take that trade. Yeah. I'm now, like, 500 times more powerful, but I'm a bit older. Yeah. But I look really cool because I've got... Because he doesn't even get older in, like, a bad way. He gets, like, the little Mr. Fantastic, like, grey there. <laughs> And then like yeah. the little crow's feet, but because obviously he's got pierced, he's got the most literal piercing blue eyes ever. Because obviously they're just ice eyes now. <laughs> yeah. So it just makes him look even hotter. Right, so we've got combat characteristics here and there's a subheading called signature moves. So we just go straight to that. I think we need to head straight there, Carl. And what do you think is the first thing listed here for signature moves? And I think it's probably one of the most iconic moves in all of fighting games. Like behind maybe Scorpion's like get over here, the spear. Behind like the Hadouken as well. Yeah, I think it's up there with it. Is it the ice slide? No, it's the ice blast. Oh, the, the ice blast, okay, them. yeah. Because I love that, because I remember in the very original arcade game, they put it in because they loved the idea of giving someone a free hit. Mm -hmm. And they wanted, obviously, Scorpion to be in the poster boys to both have like, something similar. So Scorpion gets the spear, gives you a free oh, hit, right, and then yeah. Sub-Zero gets the ice blast. So Sub-Zero sends a blast of ice directly towards the opponent to temporarily freeze them in place for a free hit. You can also freeze opponents in mid-air. Yeah, I love that, that. That's the craziest shit ever, that isn't it? And when I, they're like tucked up in a ball in the air and just... I always wonder why they didn't do like an aesthetic change in like the later games where it frees them and just put like a pillar like rooting to the floor. I think it just looks so much better when they're <laughs> a dumb <laughs> ball of ice stuck in the air. So he's, actually, he's also controlling gravity, but yeah. whatever. So if Sub-Zero were to freeze the opponent twice, the second ice ball would defrost the opponent and freeze Sub-Zero, setting him up for a free hit. I did not know that. In one of the earlier games it did that, yes. I mean, that's a very clever mechanic. And I think in later games, it just defrosts them and does a little bit of damage. So it yeah. seems like an insult thing. If you freeze them and just launch another ice, like, Poo, it goes so <laughs> fucking slow. Uh, in MK11, there is an enhanced version called the Ice Beam, where instead of a single ball of ice, Sub-Zero shoots a beam of ice. Oh, man, so that's he cool. So he shoots a Kamehameha yeah. wave of ice. In MKX, the enhanced version is called the Ice Blast and activates faster and is much larger, faster moving projectile rather than a beam. It also has the ability to destroy enemy projectiles on hit. Yeah. Yeah. Equipping Deep Freeze in one of the games allows this attack to be amplified and alters its effects. This ability requires two slots when equipped in MK11. Amplifying this attack now has Sub-Zero send a fast moving ice block and strike ducking opponents. So you can't even duck below it. It's, <laughs> it's just listening to you read that though, I'm like, 
When the fuck did Mortal Kombat come on RPG like? Oh man, yeah, the variation system is super fucking awesome. Because like, I have my one for Shao Kahn, which is called Beef. Oh. <laughs> and then I've got yeah. another one called Big Beef, which is where he hits even harder. And all it is is all the hammer attacks. Yeah. The second move listed is the one you said, the Ice Slide. Which I think is one of my favourite moves because like, that thing was so fast in the early days. Yep. And no one could stop it. Because like, the entire other side of the screen sent out a spear and now whoop! <laughs> I think that's why when you asked what the most iconic, that's the one I dicked about with the most. Because it's so fast. And yeah. it's almost, like, no one knows what to do against it when you just, just start playing. And it just looks so stupid when you spam it. And he's just... Because <laughs> all the way across the screen. So the slide. Sub-Zero slides across the floor, knocking the opponent off their feet. You assume that Sub-Zero slides by freezing the soles of his feet. <laughs> I like that. They don't know why he's doing it, but he just freezes the soles of his feet. Yeah. Like, Do you know what he's really got? He's got those um, Sonic sleigh shoes. Do you know those ones that, the ones that you slide down rails on? Oh, the actually, soap shoes. They, yeah, yeah. I bet he's just wearing them, innit? So uh, the next move is the ground ice, which is one where they just like slip on it like a jackass. <laughs> and every character gets that animation. <laughs> which I fucking adore. We've got the ice clone. And I fucking love the ice clone. Because in one of the games, they gave him the ability to just throw it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he just throws it at him. It's so fucking good. And have you seen the thing he does like mid-round in the later games where he like freezes the clone and walks off screen. And then when you stand back up, he walks back on and just punches it. <laughs> For no reason other than like, fuck you. I'm Sub-Zero. The intimidation tactic. Oh, man, it's so good. Got the ice counter. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. What's this? The ice nugget. Ice nugget. Oh, sorry. It was. Oh, sorry. It was in uh, MK versus DC. Oh, so we that's, that's why no one gives yeah, a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> the ice burst, the frost hammer, the air frost hammer, the polar puncture, the barrier of frost, the frozen aura, the ice burst, the frost bomb, the icy slide, the cold shoulder. Oh, I like the name of that one. Oh, like yeah. you know, the people naming these moves come up with some fucking pun. Creeping ice, rising ice, frigid storm, death circle barrage. You know, during his emo phase, the polar axe, the Arctic trap, deep freeze. And chill out, which is his fatal blow. Which is where the one where he sticks the axes in them. But I fucking love oh, it. Okay. I love that they're all named after ice. Yeah. And like, then you just have, for DC, it's just ice nugget. Ice just nugget. a little nugget of ice. <laughs> like, oh, God, that's so fucking lame. So as per usual, Lucas, should we end on the trivia section? Yes, we shall. Okay, so Sub-Zero makes a cameo appearance in Injustice Gods Among Us. And is a playable guest character in Injustice 2. Yes, he is, yeah. And Joe, you know what I love about that? Because Spawn got released, I think, yesterday. Oh, for, did he? For Mortal okay. Kombat 11, and during one of their character interactions, like Spawn asks Sub-Zero, have you ever been to another dimension? To which Sub-Zero responds, I've seen many injustices. And, <laughs> and Spawn responds, maybe that's why my soul still burns. Very obviously references to Injustice 2 and Soul Calibur, in which both those characters made appearances. That's but really all cool. the comments are like, I'm not sure if people missed it, but this line is a reference to Injustice. <laughs> it's like, we fucking know we're watching a compilation of Spawn quotes. And it's like, it was so on the nose. They put the title Injustice in his quote. Yeah. So. But people are watching it going, oh my God, he referenced Soul Calibur. It's like, of course. Uh, 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 and the, the fact that people think that I noticed it and no one else did. Yeah. Oh, anyway, so we've got, during Sub-Zero's Mortal Kombat 2011 ending, a warrior in shadow can be seen performing the infamous spine rip fatality on another warrior. This is likely depicting Scorpion's death by the original Sub-Zero. <laughs> I love that shit. Or maybe it's just something the Linkway teach people. And that's why no fucking mess with the Linkway. That's they are their signature move. Well, they are assassins. And I True. would fear a group of assassins. So what do they do? Do they like poison you? Do they stab you in the night? No, they walk up, freeze you in place, and then you get to see them just rip your spine out of his body. And then if it's Sub-Zero, if they call in Sub-Zero himself, he'll punch your skull and your eyeball will fly out. <laughs> in an episode of Malcolm in the Middle, Reese mentions the fact that nobody believes that he beat the last level of Mortal Kombat, to which Hal responds, do you remember this quote? It's one of my favourites in that series. Isn't it just like, nobody beats Sub-Zero? It is, yeah. That's just ridiculous. No one beats Sub-Zero. <laughs> <laughs> so Ed Boon has stated that Sub-Zero was originally going to be called Tundra, which canonically was Sub-Zero's original code name. And he obviously took it to honour his fallen brother before his brother's like, you do not deserve my yeah. name. In his MK versus DC ending, oh, let's have a look at this one. Then. He becomes Earthrealm's version of Batman. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh, that's, a, that's a great version of Batman. That's so good. That's so much scarier than Batman. <laughs> Batman, but he can freeze you in place and rip your spine now. Instead of flying everywhere, he just slides in a crouched position. So to end on, here's like quite a neat little Easter egg that, you know, is very obvious to fans of the game, but people think, 
<gasps> oh my god, I can't believe they did that. In Mortal Kombat 11, when interacting with Raiden, Raiden discusses a dream he had, which Sub-Zero will reply with, of a Dark Knight and a Caped Wonder. This is a reference to both the DC fighting game Injustice, developed by Neverland Studios, and Sub-Zero and Raiden's inclusion in them as playable guest characters. Okay. But people are like, oh my god, a Dark Knight and a Kate Wonder. Did you know that's Superman and Batman? <laughs> I bet you didn't. I bet you didn't know. I noticed that. Did you? So, oh my god. It's a further reference in an interaction with Cetrion, which Cetrion states to Sub-Zero that his dream of going there was no dream, hinting at the possibility that both Raiden and Sub-Zero actually went into the Injustice universe. <laughs> <laughs> They're both, everything's canon in Mortal Kombat, motherfuckers. Gorgeous. Reset that timeline.